With its monstrous success, it's no surprise that The Last of Us has been renewed for another season. Fans are speculating on what exactly could come of another season. If you've seen the show and you have a guess for how the story will continue, keep watching. We have a lot to talk about today. However, watch at your own risk. This video will contain spoilers for the games and the first few episodes of the first season. There's also a content warning for this video Video for a brief mention of suicide? If that topic is hard to hear about, please skip this video. Rumor has it that the first season will tell the story of the first game, which must mean that the second season will tell the story of the second game, right? I mean, maybe, but I think it's worth looking into. Let's see if we can figure out some other possibilities. After all, just in the first few episodes, we have seen the series extrapolate on the events from the game already. Episode 3 tells the story of Frank and Bill. In the game, we do do meet one of the men and the other has already died. In the show, we see the whole thing. Frank accidentally falls into a trap Bill had set to protect his house. Against his better judgment, he allows Frank to come inside for a meal. Well, this really is just right? Mm -hmm. Can you not please? We see the two hit it off right away. Frank is so grateful for a shower and a meal, and Bill is nervous and wary, but it's clear that he is enjoying Frank's company. The two end up spending a night together, and in a series of flash forwards, we see their whole partnership, right up until Frank, having been wheelchair bound and ill, asks Frank to help him end his life. Bill decides to do so, since they have no way to treat Frank, and he does not want to decline and die in pain, or become a burden on Bill. Bill decides that he's going to end his own life as well, having served his life's purpose by saving Frank's life. I'm not crying, you're crying. This is just one example of how the show has managed to take great characters from the video game and continue to flesh them out. Plot lines are also being expanded. In the series, we learn a lot more about how certain events unfold, giving them much more weight. The key to a good adaptation is to make it as its own product that can stand alone. When crossing mediums like this from video game to television series, it's important to pay close attention to certain storytelling devices that may work for one medium but not the other. For example, the color saturation and complex sets built for the show that closely mimic the look of the video game is a great way to use the medium of television to emulate the video games in some way. It can act as a subconscious reminder that the source material was a game, but we wouldn't expect to see the characters doing nothing but walking very long distances in silence because that would not serve the story. That may be what happens in a video game, but it doesn't work for a series. All of that to say, just playing the second game may not tell us everything we have to expect for the next season of the show. And just like that, HBO has hooked us all again, just in a different way. How cool is that? There is also the simple fact that the second game is much more complex and a lot longer than the first. This will give the creators and directors a lot of material to work with. The first prediction we have is that the second season will dive deeper into Ellie's backstory. That just seems like a no-brainer, especially since we've already seen the show do this with Frank and Bill's story. Writing a video game doesn't allow for as much freedom to explore complicated narratives as writing a TV show does. If you could guess what we could find out about Ellie, what would you say? The show could give us this information through flashbacks, through us seeing Ellie talk to other characters about her past, or a combination of both. Do you remember Ellie's tattoo from the second game? We know that it was drawn by her ex-girlfriend, who Ellie wouldn't have met yet canonically in the first season of the show. That could be something we get to see more of, if the writers keep that detail in the show. After all, according to canon, she gets the tattoo to cover up the bite mark on her arm, so the fact that we don't see it yet in the show follows the same story beat so far. To cover a bite mark? But what about Ellie and Joel? What 
could we see in the next season about their relationship? One thing is for sure, the second season has no choice but to explore their dynamic in some way. After all, the games are centered around them and their story. Not to mention the chemistry between Bella Ramsey and Pedro Pascal. Abandoning this dynamic at the center of the story would be madness. They just wouldn't dare. So what could happen? If you've played the game, you probably remember that Joel was missing from part of the story. Despite that, there will still be a lot of room to develop the relationship between them. Joel's absence will likely put a lot of stress on Ellie. One thing the show could do is allow us to see Ellie coping with Joel not being around as much. Some fans are concerned that the time jump that occurs between the first and second game may mean that Bella Ramsey will be replaced with another actor as Ellie. Thankfully, this doesn't seem to be the case. Whew. We imagine that Bella's incredible interpretation of the character, her popularity with fans, and the chemistry she and Pedro have are the main reasons that this idea would have been scrapped. It's also important to note that Pedro Pascal had to go through a 20-year time jump, and that was done expertly by HBO. So we are pretty sure that the second season will use the second game as a guide for the story. We know that we will be seeing more of Ellie and Joel's relationship, along with a confirmed time jump. And we are pretty sure that we will be seeing the same cast play the characters, right HBO? HBO, right? The last thing we have to speculate on is where season two will end. There's no way to know for sure, of course, but knowing the length and scope of the game gives us some clues. Unless the new season is twice the length as the first, which doesn't seem likely based on some interviews Craig Mazin has done, then it's possible that season two will end somewhere near the middle of the narrative in the game. What happened? My best friend was there. And she got bit too. Swear to me that everything that you said about the fireflies is true. Mason has also spoken on the scope of the show in general. Probably the amount of remaining story would take us more than a season to tell, but definitely I don't see this as something that runs on and on. We don't have that ambition. This is interesting for a few reasons. It seems to be a trend of the times to overdo it when it comes to a television series. I'm looking at you, Supernatural. 15 seasons? Hearing a creator say that they have no intention on aimlessly telling the story with no end in mind is refreshing. It's also a good sign for the quality of the rest of the show. With a clear plan, the team can really focus on the story they are telling. It's also nice to hear that the legacy of this very popular game won't be ruined by a never-ending adaptation. Do you have any theories? Anything we didn't cover today? Please let us know what you think down below. And please don't forget to like our video and subscribe. Click the notification bell too so you never miss a new video from us. See everyone next time. Come on.